Hey guys, today we're gonna to show you how you can take the horn parts from all those classic James Brown songs and put them on the guitar. Now the guitar parts from most of the songs in James Brown's catalog, they're pretty simple and minimalistic in a sense because there's so much going on. There's bass and there's horn parts obviously and there's drums and there's vocals and all this stuff. So the guitar parts usually just kind of sit real nice in the mix. But if you take them out, it's just like, wow, there's, there's really something missing. But if you analyze the guitar parts, sometimes it's like, yeah, they might be doing some funky chords like, you know something like that or it might be you know it's either one of the two but what's gonna be cool is you can actually take these horn parts which are mostly like groupings of like two notes or three notes you know like dyads or triads and how you can actually voice them onto the guitar and kind of add some color to your playing now keep in mind that the ideas presented in this video are not necessarily only confined to James Brown recordings you can take these ideas and pretty much move them into any key and then basically put them in any song of any genre, as long as it fits, obviously. Now, just to avoid the possibility of this video being taken down for copyright reasons, we're going to include the links to the original songs in the video description. So the first song that we're gonna look at is the track, I Feel Good. And I'm just gonna kind of show you an idea of what it's like to kind of put the horn parts in. <laughs> So what I just played was some of the guitar part and some of the bass line, but I did take the voicings of the horns and put them on the guitar. So what's happening is in the original recording, the guitar player is not going because it would just kind of get in the way. Sometimes it's best just to have the guitar maybe or whatever he played. Sometimes it's nice just to give him the single note part and just have the horns kind of take care of their own parts. But what I did is to kind of fill it up is I took those horn parts and just kind of moved them onto the guitar. So it's just basically a chord. So it's like a D7 chord. Which this particular voicing, you don't really find in a lot of chord books. Um, usually if there's like a D7 voicing or any sort of dominant seventh voicing, it might be like this. Or it might be like this. But this particular voicing, is everywhere. It's in Cool in the Gang, it's in Earth, Wind and Fire. So that's just something to point out in itself. So basically the horn parts are kind of pretty much playing those notes stacked like that, okay? And then what's happening is it's kind of just wavering back and forth a half step. So it's going. So you have a choice of either just playing the notes on the D, G and B string and leaving the root out. Or you can include that root in there on the A string. So you can just kind of experiment and go or so our four chord is going to be a G7 and all that's happening is you're going to take that original shape and shift it up to the 10th fret and then when it comes back to the one you just move that shape back to the original position. Okay, and in this video, I'm mainly just kind of analyzing what the horn parts played as a chordal harmony, but that one section where there's that saxophone break, it's kind of like this pentatonic based idea. So I'm not necessarily looking at everything that they played, but just these little ideas like that, because you can play that in so many different songs. It's, it's everywhere, so if you take that shape you could say yes, it's an idea that was inspired by a James Brown horn part, you can take that idea and kind of put it anywhere else where a D7th chord is required. So the next song we're going to look at is a track called Cold Sweat, and it's also in D. It goes like this. So obviously that's not the exact bass line, the exact guitar part or whatever. But the main thing to look at is this, that voicing. What I think I'm hearing is something similar to that. So that's a D seventh chord. Well, really kind of a D nine chord actually. Usually when I play a D nine chord, it's, 
You hear that a lot in different recordings. But the way that it's voiced, it's really kind of an E9, kind of sliding back into a D9. But what's happening is you go to that E9, and what you're playing with that middle finger on the 12th fret on the D string, you're going to move it down to the 10th fret on the high E string, and everything else is going to stay the same. So you had this, but you're going to move that bottom note up to the top. And then you're going to slide that down two frets. So it's kind of cool because if you take that idea and kind of move it, how do I say, upwards, direction-wise, not pitch-wise, It really kind of opens you up a little bit because sometimes, you know, for a while when I was kind of first, you know, starting out maybe, I would, if I had a D seventh chord, I would kind of stay in one area. But you can really venture outside of that, including this. So in this particular song, That particular chord kind of part of a bigger family of dominant chords that kind of flow into each other. This particular voicing is really a D dominant 9 voicing, but you can kind of flip notes around. So what this is showing us is that we don't necessarily have to just play a dominant 9 chord like that or like that, we can go and then get into some dominant 11s too. So for the song Cold Sweat, like I said, with any of these, I'm not really analyzing every little particular part of it. I'm really just kind of looking at some of the parts that kind of interested me. So. Like I said, that's what the horn parts are playing. So off the top of my head, I can't really tell you exactly how many trumpets or saxophones or whatever he had. Um, but in that track, they're layering it just like that. So keep in mind, like I said, you don't have to confine these ideas just to James Brown songs. Anytime that you have a dominant tonality, like for example, I'm going to move it up to E. You can just take it and just run with it. So the next track we're going to look at is the song Get Up Off of That Thing and it is in the key of F sharp, but in the original recording, it's kind of like F sharp plus like a semitone up. It's like in between an F sharp and a G natural. So some of those old school recordings are like that. And the basic vamp of it is something like this. So the horns haven't really come in yet, but when they do come in, something like this. So it's not necessarily a triad, it's really just kind of like, you know, like a two note chord. So, so the idea of it to me, it sounds like it's like an F sharp six, sliding down to an E natural six, but you still have that F sharp in the root. So it's not necessarily a full chord, it's really just two notes. So instead of, they did, So the important thing to do now is to kind of look at the bigger picture. You can take these two note chords and move them up or down. So you have this, but you can voice it like this and move up. So by looking at this, yeah, that's what's going on in the song. That's what the horn parts are playing. But you can kind of take it and run with it. So next we're going to look at the song Papa's Got a Brand New Bag. It's in the key of E and it goes like this. part in there, a little bit of the guitar part, but the main thing to look at is this 
That's the horn part. And really what it is, it's kind of a minor seventh tonality. So we have this, how do I say, like this F sharp minor seven over an E, resolving into an E minor seven. So you have, and you can move that in any key. So I'm gonna put it in G. Now I'm gonna go, uh, So if you play soul music or R&B music, these ideas can basically be translated into different settings. So the tricky part about it is when it goes to the four chord, the voicing is like, which is really a, it's still a A7 tonality, but you kind of got to use your pinky to kind of get that 10th fret on the B string and the E string, pull off of it into that index finger on the 8th fret on the B and that middle finger on the 9th fret on the high E. One thing that I do to kind of help it out a little bit is I take my pick and I put it on the A string to kind of get this open A drone and then I use my middle finger and my ring finger on the B string and the high E string. So instead of, I kind of just faintly hit that A string. Just to kind of give it a little bit more fullness. So what it ends up sounding like, instead of this, it's like this. So one thing that's kind of interesting to look at is at first you have this, this minor seventh tonality, and then when it goes to the four chord, it's dominant. So it's kind of neat to point that out. And like I said, you can move this to any key. You know, it's not like you can only do these certain ideas on James Brown's song. So like I said, when I moved this, I moved it to G. Or you can go B flat. So it's kind of neat. All right, so the next song we're going to look at is Super Bad. Gangsters, what's up, guys? Great movie, by the way. And it's in the key of D. And the horn parts are kind of doing this seven sharp nine tonality. So you probably know that if you're a guitar player, most likely if you're watching this, but uh, that dominant seven with the sharp nine is the purple haze chord. But what's happening in this song, because it's in D, you're actually shifting it down two frets. So in context, it sounds like this. But what's cool is when the guitar part comes in, the guitar part doesn't play this. The horns kind of do that in certain areas, but when the guitar comes in, it's kind of almost like a it could be a dominant nine, but it almost sounds like it's a minor nine, almost. So it's like... So it's not this. It's kind of like this. So now we're going to go to the bridge of Superbad. It goes to the four chord. So instead of being on the one, which is D7, now we're going to go to a G7. And the horn parts go like this. So what's going on there? It's a G11 to an F sharp minor over G to an E minor over G to a D minor over G. So this is kind of going or whatever the bass part of the guitar part is playing. We're looking at the horn parts, remember. So it's these different triads that are kind of moving around the common pedal, which is G. So it's a G11, or you can look at it as an F natural triad over G, to F sharp minor over G, E minor over G, to a D minor over G. So that's one thing to kind of point out is that you can keep a note the same, but you can move different notes on top of it, as long as it sounds good, of course. So the last song we're gonna look at is I Got the Feeling, and it's an F, and it goes like this. So I'm playing a little bit of the guitar part, a little bit of the bass part, and a little bit of the horn part. So what's actually going on in this is you have an F6 going to an E flat six, 
but you still have that F natural in the bass. So you have, and then that's kind of going on in the uh, bass guitar. And then the horns go, and it's just kind of fourths. It should sound like Here Comes the Bride, right? And it goes, so it's kind of just walking down the scale a little bit. So the first part, it's not really a chord. You could maybe go something like that, but sometimes in these old recordings, it's hard to tell exactly what's going on, but two parts kind of stuck out to me. It's this. So when you create a synthesis of them, you could also look at it as a dominant nine chord in a sense. You can kind of restack the notes. So you have to an E flat six. But you could also call it a F dominant nine. So. Okay. So as you can see, you can transpose other parts from different instruments onto the guitar. You don't have to just live in guitar land. You can learn a lot from different horn players, obviously, like this video, or you can learn from keyboard players too. So what that'll do is it'll open us up and give us a different approach to our instrument. Now, obviously, if you are playing in like a big like nine piece band or whatever, where there is a horn section and you are playing James Brown songs like this or Earth, Wind & Fire or Cool & The Gang or anyone like that, you should probably just stick to the guitar part because band leaders love when you just play your part just like the record, right? Um, it's probably not advisable to just play what the horn players are playing on the guitar. One reason why I did start doing this, like maybe taking horn parts from different songs and kind of playing them on the guitar on certain gigs, is because we didn't have horn players. And it can add a little bit extra spice or creativity to the guitar parts by maybe taking parts like that that maybe normally wouldn't be played on the guitar and you could just put it right on there and it'll just kind of open you up. We hope you guys like this video. If you want to see more lessons like this, different reviews and different covers, then you can subscribe to my YouTube channel and click the bell. See ya.